Hello everybody, thank you very much for being here today. Before I start, a general question. How many of you have ever heard the word Hyperloop? Wow. I, wow, that is awesome. That is really awesome. That's like twice as much as in the last like, talk I gave. Um, yeah, my name is Mariana and for the last seven, eight months I have been leading the VAR Hyperloop team at TU Munich. Um, but how did this all start? So, I'm originally from Brazil and have been in Munich studying computer science for around six years now. But every time I tell somebody I'm from Brazil, the image that pops into everybody's heads is beautiful beaches and carnaval and samba and party. The cliche Brazilian image. But that's not the Brazil I come from. That's the Brazil I come from. Sao Paulo, in any, any normal day, uh, anyone who has ever been to Sao Paulo knows exactly where that picture was taken. Um, it's a city where it's very normal for people to spend over 10 hours a week stuck in traffic. And really very little has done in the direction to solve such a huge transportation problem. Which is a bit where our project comes in, but the transportation problem isn't just traffic. What if, instead of solving just that transportation problem, we could also solve this transportation problem? What if you could get from Munich to Berlin in half an hour? And it sounds crazy, it sounds completely not possible, and I'm here to tell you that it is. And it's called the Hyperloop. Um, the idea was originally conceived by Elon Musk back in 2013, when he released a 60-page alpha study, um, a bit technical, about how this whole thing is possible. The idea behind the Hyperloop is you have capsules, going inside a semi-vacuum tube, and it goes in this direction, I know it's counterintuitive. Um, and the capsules levitate, so basically no friction. And inside the tube, there's semi-vacuum, so also no air drag. The idea behind the whole thing is, is if you have nothing to slow you down, as long as you accelerate long enough, you can reach the high speeds. The full-scale Hyperloop is supposed to reach speeds of Mach 0.9, that's basically 1,200 kilometers per hour, which isn't bad. Um, we are just building a prototype for that. Our test track is only one and a half kilometers long, so we don't have the infinite space to accelerate. Uh, but Sada will talk a bit more about that later. But if you ask me, the idea doesn't sound that much complicated. Why hasn't it been around? Um, why don't we already go hyperloops from Munich to Berlin? And the answer is a bit related to the timing that was previously mentioned in the other talk. Um, the idea about having things in capsules going in vacuum tubes has been around since 1850, when the banks were using hoapos, uh, pneumatic tubes, to send letters around. It was eventually replaced by something called the email. Um, but the... And then, eventually, people did come up with the idea, let's scale this up and use it to transport people. A few years ago, the Swiss Metro came up with a similar project that was vacuum, um, which was trains inside of a vacuum tunnel, um, transporting people, but that also didn't take off. And there's a key difference between the Hyperloop and all of the other previous ideas that came around, and the key difference is the semi-vacuum part of the vacuum tube. Um, by not having complete vacuum, you're able to greatly reduce the infrastructure costs. You don't need expensive industrial tubes um, to have complete vacuum. Basi uh, the, our prototype will operate at a pressure of 860 Pascal. That is like eight thousandths of atmosphere um, pressure. That's really far from vacuum. And by doing so, you greatly reduce infrastructure costs and um, for Construction and maintaining the tube, therefore making it quite more reasonable. And the reason why that still works and it doesn't, uh, so we have some air inside of the tube, and that air could eventually slow you down. The reason why it doesn't is because of this guy in the front. In the front of the Hyperloop, there is a compressor, and this is the thing that is completely new from all of the other previous ideas. The compressor, you can imagine that it basically acts as a huge vacuum cleaner inner that sucks the air from the top front and uh, throws the air inside the pod through the back. This prevents that the air doesn't need to go outside the pod and therefore has, um, doesn't have limited space 
to go through. By, going, by allowing the air to move inside of the pod to, through an air duct, you basically solve the Kantrovitz problem. So, yeah, Musk. Musk and his crazy ideas. Um, a few companies are out there. There are currently two companies out there who, wanted, who are working on building a full-scale Hyperloop. But even by their best estimates, they will be um, starting to operate until uh, <coughs> test uh, runs should be done in the end of next year. That was way too long for Musk. And he also wanted to keep his own name behind the whole thing, which is why he started a student's competition. Um, the competition was announced in June 2015 last year, and the story behind it goes that I was in the search of a master thesis, um, and thinking, hmm, that sounds like something cool. That sounds like something that actually could be an interesting research project. And so I started searching for a team. Uh, but as I said, I study computer science. I didn't even know where to start searching. Uh, the best idea I was able to come up with was open the mechanical engineering website, because I was smart enough to figure out that this had some mechanical engineering in it. Um, I opened the mechanical engineering website, um, opened a list of the chairs, and started going through all of the chairs and seeing which one of these has something similar. I was expecting to find something like a chair for trains or something, but that doesn't exist. Um, the closest thing I was able to find was the chair for aerodynamics. So I knocked at their door, literally, and in uh, 15 minutes there were like 15 people standing around me thinking, hmm, cool body. <laughs> but the um, most valuable advice I ever got from the aerodynamics chair was to knock at their neighbors. VAR. VAR stands for Wissenschaftliches Arbeitsgemeinschaft für Raumfahrt und Raketentechnik. Scientific work group for rocketry and space flight, for those non-German speakers. And it's a student organization at TUM that has been around for over 50 years. And the awesome thing about VAR, there are a few awesome things about VAR, but the um, important thing is they have experience in building <coughs> practical stuff. They usually build rockets and satellites and actually ship them off to space. And they change the definition about uh, space a bit so that uh, depending on the um, height they can achieve. Um, but these are exactly the people I needed in the project. People who knew how to build things practically. And of course, they were a bit motivated to hear the name Space Sites and Elon Musk. That did have a lot to do with that, even if the Hyperloop didn't. Um, I was able to motivate them. Um, but even so, these things start very small. If you consider that the entire student group, uh, base of VAR is almost 200 students, that was my complete initial team. <laughs> seven people. From the 200 people, seven of them were interested enough to start working on the Hyperloop project. And that is the initial team who worked on the design. Since then, things have escalated quite a bit. And that's a whole other story from which Sada is going to explain to you a bit more. Thank you. Thank you very much. For your... It's not finished yet. <laughs> so now I'm going to explain a little bit how the competition has taken off so far. So this was the initial team, as Mariana just mentioned, and we registered to participate in the SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition um, last September. And this was our first design. It got us through. It was 700 teams worldwide registered, and we were accepted to participate in the semifinals this January in Texas. So um, that was quite amazing. We had to do a lot of revisioning in the design because SpaceX was constantly changing the parameters because they're building the tube where our pod will be going through and just sort of building the track, so we had to change a lot of things because they're weakly changing every parameter and requirements of the pod. So this is how our design looked like in January. As you can see, it got up to almost uh, a ton, and if we would have built this, it would have cost over half a million euros. But this design got us through the semifinals this January. So we are one of the 30 teams out of the 700 teams who are now at the final round. So we're really proud of that. So we're set, yeah. And all of you guys
guys can say, yes, Tom is part of Elama's uh, Hyperloop competition. We're standing next to MIT, Delft, Berkeley. We kicked out Stanford, which is really awesome. <laughs> um, but now we have to build a pod, which is going to be, become a little bit complicated because we have a strict time um, restraint. So we sat down at the table and looked at the numbers. And we were thinking, oh shit, we have to get money for half a million euros. How are we going to do this? Especially in Germany, where all the companies think that every single project of Elon Musk is crazy and not profitable. <laughs> so then we decided to reduce the size of the compressor. Remember the compressor is the front part that sucks the air through the, the, uh, the pod while going through. So that reduced automatically um, the price up to 200,000 euros. And we said, okay, yeah, I, we think we can get that money. So all of this uh, we couldn't have done with the small team that Marianne just introduced, and the team grew up to 35 people. Out of various disciplines, we have mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, uh, physics people, chemistry people, computer scientists, just as Mariana, and of course we always need business people, especially for the money. <laughs> but this is the team that got us to win the semi-finals, where we have this trophy, and this is like our little baby in our office, because this is Elon Musk's signature, so this is really cool. <laughs> no one's allowed to touch it tonight. <laughs> um, yeah. So now we have to build this actual pod. Um, we have already started, but first, before we start, uh, we have a great team. We have an awesome, amazing um, concept. We have calculated everything through, always adapt to the new requirements, which are still currently changing from SpaceX. They're kind of like behaving like a startup, but um, there's always one thing that always stops execution, and that is money. If we don't have money, we cannot start building. So we uh, started um, acquiring sponsors. We are still acquiring sponsors, but we figured out really fastly that it does not help looking at your bank account and the numbers don't change. So we decided that by the beginning of this month to start constructing the pod. <coughs> We're um, building the pod in Makerspace, if you know it. Is it gushing? Okay, really cool. We secretly call it the hyperspace. And um, we're receiving the parts slowly, um, as Germany is sometimes slow. Um, and yeah, it's taking form. So you guys can also come and visit, and it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, by June, we want to uh, finish the whole thing and test it. Because we actually have no idea how all the electrical components behave in a vacuum space. So after this, after we hope that the pod will not um, get destroyed by testing, uh, we're really sure it won't. Um, and after this, we will ship our pod off to Los Angeles, to the headquarters of SpaceX, where the competition will take place in August. And of course, when. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people, all of our friends have been asking us why we're actually doing this. Um, most of us study mechanical engineering, like um, really complicated subjects where you should actually go to class, but we don't because of um, Hyperloop. And, um, and there's not even a price announced from SpaceX side. So it's also not about the price. It's about a much bigger picture here because we believe in the same vision as Elon Musk. We want to create a greener place for next generations in the, in the future. And this is by creating something new to, to disrupt the transportation uh, logistics system nowadays because it just does so much emission and we have all our current problems at this moment. Such as looking outside the weather today. I mean, how crazy is it that it's snowing in this time of the year? A lot of nations and companies have been trying to tackle this problem but they're not really being innovative enough. And we think it takes innovation to not go to the same road, uh, to take the same road over and over again. We need to take a new road. And this is exactly what Hyperloop is gonna do. This is especially really nicely put by a really famous poem writer, Robert Frost, who wrote um, two roads diverged in a wood, 
and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And that's exactly what we're going to do, and we hope that we have inspired you to the Hyperloop, and please join the ride of the Hyperloop and support us. We're going to win the competition. Thank you very much. Questions, please.